Well, this is the Enigma machine. It's, it's basically a typewriter keyboard with a light panel. Now, the keyboard only has 26 letters. There's no space bar, numbers, or special characters. And that was done on purpose because those kinds of characters would help give away the code. Uh, the way it works is quite simple, really. Uh, it's a typewriter, so you press a key that looks like a typewriter, and uh, eventually a light bulb lights up. And the light bulb that lights up will light up a letter that's different than the key that you pressed. And so that's the coding. Now here is the German plugboard. Plugboard allows you to switch uh, one letter to another. Let's say the E. If I press the E and I want to change that E to a different letter, I would put that in here and let's say I want to change it to an I, I would move it here. The second thing they would have to do is open up this machine and here's the inner lid and then here are the three rotors. And the way you would take those out is you have to release the pressure on them like this and that loosens them up so that now that they can be removed. Each wheel has a notch, and that notch tells the next wheel next to it when to advance one. And so that notch is movable, and the way you uh, do that is you move this little lever out of the way. You can see it's now in position four, which is the letter D, and I'm given a, a, a letter to move it to, let's say the letter eight. Now each one of these has a Roman numeral on them, one through five, and I, I happen to have one three and two here. And let's say that uh, that's, the, that's the position that you're told as an operator to put them in. Three, two, one. Now I'm gonna put those in the machine. I would close this up. And the next thing I would do is I would set these on the correct positions for the day. And let's say it's five, 10, 15. So I will put this on position five, the next one on position 10, and the next one on position 15. And I can start uh, taking uh, and receiving messages. Let's say I want to send a simple message like hello. Okay, I've, I've got my day setting, I'm all ready to go, so I'll press first the H for hello, and I note the letter that's, that lights up, it's a Q. Then I press the E, and a Q lights up again. Now I'm going to press the L twice, and I get an E and a K. You notice two different letters lit up. I press the O and an H lights up. So now I would give this message to the person that would send this, QQEKH. Now I'm the, the new operator and now I'm gonna type in these letters and note what letters light up. So I type the Q and an H lights up. I press it again, now an E. Then I type the E letter, and you see an L light up. I press the K, and you see the L lights up again, and then an H, and the O lights up. So I just now decoded that message to the original message that was sent to me, hello. Uh, the beginnings of computing is directly attributable to the uh, Enigma. Uh, if you had 100,000 people with 100,000 Enigma machines, all testing different settings of that Enigma machine to brute strength break it. It would, uh, and they could do that, uh, test a different setting once a second, 24 by seven. It would take twice the age of the universe to break the code. So that's why the Germans had such confidence that it wouldn't be broken. When you look at the technology that was available, they just did not foresee that Turing would embed a computer to break the code.